Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can make this cool wavy kinetic topography. In this tutorial we'll be using two external libraries. The first one is opentype.js to get the path of the text and then g.js to resample the path or to distribute points along the path of the text. I have another video where I explain the details so if you want to get a better and deeper understanding I would go there because in this video we'll go a little bit quicker. But the four main steps that we're going to do is that one we're going to start by loading the font then we're going to use opentype.js to get the path and then we're going to use g.js to resample the path and then we're going to convert the array of points that we get from 1D to 2D for better and easier control of the points to work with. Let's start by uploading the font. So you want to click this arrow here, click the plus sign and then click create folder. I'm going to call my folder fonts and then you're going to click this arrow and then upload file. This is where you're going to drag and drop your font file in here. Once your file is uploaded, you want to go to index.html file first. Here, we're going to paste the source files for the opentap.js and the g.js libraries. So you come here. After the source file for p5.js, you're going to copy and paste these two sets of code. One is going to be for g.js library, and then the other one is going to be for opentype.js. So once you have these two, you can go back to sketch.js and then start uploading the font. So to do that, we're going to do it in the setup function. Start by writing the word open type, then dot load. Inside this parentheses here, you're going to put where your font file is. And then in my case, it's in the folder called fonts. And then the file is called lemon milk dash regular dot OTF. So that's what I'm going to put in here. So fonts backslash lemon milk dash regular dot OTF. And then you want to put in function. All right, and then I'm going to put a semicolon here. So inside the function parentheses here, you're going to put ERR and F. Then you're going to start by writing a conditional statement. So if there's an error, ERR for error, then you want to console log or print what the error is. And else, we're going to set font to F. So this font, we're going to also declare it as a new variable. All right, so this is how we preload the font. Similar to how we usually use the preload function within p5.js, but in this case, because opentype.js is not part of p5.js, we need to do it this way. Now we're going to get the path for the text. So let's declare a few more variables. The first one is how about the text that we want? I'm going to call this variable msg. And then how about I'm going to use my name as the message. And then we're going to set the font size. And also the last one is going to be the font path. This is the variable that we're going to use to get the path. All right, so in here, we're going to put font path to be equals to font.getPath. And getPath is a function, a method within the opentype.js library. Inside this parenthesis here, the arguments that we need to give is first, the text that we want to write, and then the X and Y location of the text bounding box, the bottom left corner. I'm going to set it at 0, 0, 0,0 first, and then we can translate it in the draw function. And then we want to also give it the font size, which we have not set yet. So how about let's do 200. Now let's print what font path outputs. All right, so there's a word path here, and there's a bunch of things. The main one that I want you to focus is path.commands. Inside the commands is an array with 46 objects. And then inside object, you can see there is type and there is X and Y, right? There is a different type here. There's M, L, there's a bunch of types. Now we're going to use g.js library to resample the path. So we're going to distribute points along the path that we get from opentype.js library. So let's start by declaring a new variable called path. And then let's set path to be equals to new g.path. Then inside here, you want to put in the commands, the commands or like the array that we get from here. So it's going to be font path dot commands. So that's what we're going to put in here. So font path dot commands. 
And then let's try to print this. Now we start at 46 objects, right? It's still at 46 because we have not resampled the path yet. But I want you to look at this function that we're going to use called resample by length. Path is going to be set to g.resample by length. And this is basically telling it that we're going to resample this path, distribute points 10 pixels away from each other. So we started out at 46 objects, right? 46 objects. So now if we print path, we get 258 that are 10 pixels away from each other. Let's say we do one. And then now we get even more number of objects, right? Two, four, eight, seven. So let's just do 10. Now to the last step before we can start working with these points, I want to convert from this 1D array of 258 objects, which contains all the points for the whole entire word pad, right? I want it to be a 2D array so that I can control each of the letter P, A, T, T. So first I want to create a new variable called points and array, right? And then I'm going to use a for loop. And this for loop is going to go through all the points within path.commands, path.commands here. So total of 258 here, I plus plus. Then as you can see here, there is a bunch of commands here. There are a total of three commands. There is M, there's L, and there's Z. M tells you that it is the start of the letter. And then Z tells you that it's at the end of the letter. And then L just tells you to connect each of the points together. So we're going to say if path.commands of I dot type, right? Type equals to M. So you know that it's at the start of the letter. Then I want points dot push. I want to create a new 1D array there. And then if path.commands of I dot type is not equals to Z. So all the points that make up that specific letter, I want to add it to my points 1D array that I just created. So points of points dot length minus one. So I want to add it at the index of whatever the length of my points is at the time. Dot push, and then I want to push x and y coordinates. So I'm going to use the function create vector, which is a function within the vector class, and the vector class holds two values, x and y. So I'm going to put in path.commands of i dot x, and then path.commands of i dot y. I'm going quite quickly here, but in my other video where I go through how to use OpenType.js and G.js explains a lot deeper in what we're doing right now. So if you're confused, I recommend you watch that video. To make sure that everything is correct, let's go to draw here and then let's print the array points. Oh, this has to be less than path.commands.length. All right, so if I were to print points again, uh, and I also forgot the S here. All right, okay, so now you can see that we have a total of one to the array, and then how many? One, two, three, four, five, six inner arrays for Pat, right? P, A, T, T, but because P has the inner outline inside and also is A. All right, so now we have this, so we can work with it. Inside the draw function, now, let's just try to draw the outline here. So for let i equals to zero, i less than points of length, point dot length, i plus plus. Then the inner one would be let j equals to zero, j less than points of i dot length, right? So this is drawing each of the inner letter, right? j plus plus. How about we just draw an ellipse for all the points. So it's going to be at points of i and j dot x 
then points of i and j dot y, and then let's give it a size of 10. Okay, and then we also need to translate it, right? Because right now I have it set at 0, 0. How about we translate it by 10 to the right, and then how about maybe 150 down? Maybe it has to be more. Let's do 200. And then I'm going to I'm going to do 250 actually, and then I'm going to also increase the size of my canvas. Perfect. All right, so now I have my name written down here, but I actually just want a line, right? So instead of using the function ellipse, I'm going to use the function called vertex. And with vertex, we need to use the function begin shape and end shape to end the outline of that specific shape. So I want to draw each of the letters separately, right? Each of the outlines. So this is one outline, and then the inside here is also one outline. So begin shape needs to be inside the first loop, and then end shape can be here. All right, and then I need the word close here so that it closes the outline. Actually, end shape needs to be after the loop here. So we have this inner loop that draws all of the vertex points, right? So we want to begin shape and end shape outside of the inner for loop. Let's try this. All right. So you can see that it's not, you know, all straight. Like there's like this diagonal line here. And that's because of the number of points that are between each other. So right now it's at 10 pixels, right? So if we were to redistribute the points. So let's do five pixels. That's pretty good, but then there's still some here. So if we just do one pixel, so now it's a very clean line. All right, and I also want to put in no fill. How about that? Perfect. Next, we're going to draw a bunch of these outlines that are at a specific offset from this first outline. So let's declare a new variable called num, and I'm going to set that to five. So I want to draw five of these sets of outlines. And I'm going to write another for loop that goes through that. So let k, let's do k equals to zero, k less than num, k plus plus. Then I'm going to put this whole nested for a loop inside because we want to draw more of these outlines, right? But if I were to click run right now, nothing would happen because we haven't used this key variable to offset anything. So I want to offset the y direction. So right here, I want to add it by, let's do k times how about 10. Do you see that? If I were to do 20, I want to change the appearance a little bit. So how about let's make stroke weight to be three. It's kind of hard to see. So let's put fill back to white. You can see that the very bottom one is the one that is all the way on the top. But it, actually what I want is that I want the right now the one that is drawn first to be the top one. So we can rewrite this for loop. So instead of doing k equals to zero, you can do k equals to num minus one. And if k is larger than zero, then increment down. All right, so now this bottom one is drawn first and so on. And right now we have, actually we just do if k equals to num. So we have five. And let's draw more. Let's do 20. Okay, and then let's move it up a bit. So let's do maybe 100. 120. About 130. <laughs> All right. 
And now I want it to move back and forth in that wavy pattern. And we have done a lot of these type of movement before, which is an oscillating motion, specifically the simple harmonic motion. And the special thing about a simple harmonic motion is that it can be represented by the sine or the cosine function. Let's add it to this argument here, right, which is the x location of the vertex point. So I want to add, what do I want to add? The sine function, how about that? So let's do sine of a specific angle. We also want to put in the amplitude. I'm going to call it r for radius. Then I'm going to set this new variable. Let's do r to be equals to how about 20. And then let angle to start at 0. And then I'm also going to increment the angle by one degree at a time and we also need to now set the angle mode to degrees all right let's try this okay so now you can see that it's moving at a constant pace and all of the outlines are moving at the same time but to get that wavy pattern it needs to not move at the same exact time inside our parentheses here we also want to add another variable and we can do it using this k variable here to change the starting point so what if we do k if we just do k we cannot really see the shift but you can see a little bit that it doesn't start at the same starting point so we can multiply it by how about 20. all right so now you can see it moving in this wavy pattern and if you want it to move faster, you can just change the increment here. You can now play around with the different variables, whether it be the variables that change the appearance, the variable that change the number of outlines that you want, the wavy pattern that you see here, and create this wavy kinetic typography.